Falcon 9's in startup. And there's that confirmation that Falcon 9 is in startup. Next up at T minus 45 seconds, we should hear the call out for a go for launch. LD is go for launch. And there's that call out for go for launch. So as we're approaching T zero, it is T minus 35 seconds. Let's watch and listen into the nets and watch this liftoff of T our 30 seconds. of our Starlink payload with our planet's sky sets. T minus 15 seconds. Delta 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off of Falcon 9 and Starlink Ocho. Plus 40 seconds into flight, and Falcon 9 has just had a successful Power liftoff. A successful liftoff from Pad 40 for its first Starlink rideshare, carrying three Planet SkySats and our SpaceX Starlink satellites. Next coming up will be Max Q, and that is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle sees, the the largest structural load that the vehicle sees throughout ascent. Max Q. And there's that call out that we just passed through Max Q. Next up will be three events happening back to back, and that will be Miko, our main engine cutoff, stage separation, as well as second engine start or SES 1. Main engine cutoff or Miko is when all nine of the M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next event, which is stage separation. And stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage, with first stage making its way back to Earth and second stage taking our satellites to their targeted orbit. And then finally will be SES-1, which is second engine start with that MVEC engine lighting up and taking those... The vehicle is following a nominal trajectory. ...and taking those satellites to orbit. Now those three events are coming up here in about 15 seconds. Again, that is Miko stage separation and SES-1. Miko stage separation confirmed. And there, as you saw live on your screen, Miko, main engine cutoff and stage separation. First stage being on your left screen, on your right screen is second stage with that MVEC engine glowing bright red there. On your left screen, you can see those grid fins deploying on the first stage. Those grid fins help. Fairing separation confirmed. And we just had fairing separation. We had a successful deployment of those fairing halves. Let's see if Miss Tree and Miss Chief can make a catch the attempt today. The vehicle continues to follow a nominal trajectory. And as I was mentioning, the grid fins have deployed. That helps guide that first stage back to its landing zone. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda.
Stage two is still looking good. We're getting a nice bright view of first stage on your left screen. And coming up next for first stage as it makes its way back to Earth, it will perform a couple of burns, the first of which will be the entry burn. And that entry burn is where three of the nine Merlin 1D engines light up and slow the stage down as it re-enters back into the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is called the landing burn, and this is when the single engine on the, on the vehicle, the E9 engine, ignites and brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. And again, we are attempting to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. We're getting a nice bright view. I, I believe that is the sun hitting that first stage on your left screen there. So really, really cool, cool view of that. Second stage is still looking good. That is on your right screen. And at T plus five and a half minutes, we're just about a minute and 15 seconds or so away from that entry burn beginning on that first stage. Vehicle continues to follow a nominal trajectory. There's that call out that the second stage vehicle is still on a good trajectory. And again, that first stage is making its way back to our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. With the entry burn coming up here in about 30 seconds or so. Again, if you're just now joining us, what you can see on your left screen is first stage with those grid fins deployed, guiding the vehicle back to its landing zone. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn has started. And there you can see that the entry burn has begun. It's lighting up that screen pretty bright there. Now, the entry burn will last about 20 seconds long. And that completes the entry burn for first stage. We have a really cool view of Earth in the background of first stage. That is an awesome view. Stage two is still looking good. We're just about a minute away from that landing signal, burn. First stage from the Cape, expected. And we did hear that call out that we did lose that live signal of the first stage as expected. Coming up here in uh, at about T plus eight minutes and 21 seconds will be the beginning of the landing burn. Landing burn will last about 20 seconds long. And then hopefully we'll get to see first stage touch down on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Stage one is transonic. And about 10 seconds after landing of the first stage will be SECO one on second stage. So we'll, we will have a couple of events happening very close to each other. So we'll listen in and wait for those call outs. Stage two has entered terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn has started. And that landing burn has begun on the first stage. Again, this will last about 20 seconds long. Let's wait and watch to see if we can land this booster stage for a third FTS time. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage one landing legs have deployed. Wow, and we got a live awesome view. And Touchdown. stage one is landed. Landing <laughs> operators proceed to 11.100 on recovery one and ECF nine. And there you heard that call out and you can see on your left screen that stage one has landed on Of Course I Still Love You. 
We are waiting for stage two for Seco one, which is second engine cutoff. What an awesome view of that first stage. Nominal orbital insertion. All right, starting uh, TX prime R of one A on. We did confirm Seco and confirmed okay. good <laughs> orbit. So now that second stage is going to coast in this orbit for a few minutes. We're going to take a quick break and return back at T plus 11 minutes and 30 seconds for the deployment of Planet's three Skysats. Welcome back to the webcast for Starlink. So far this morning, we had an on-time liftoff of our Falcon 9 vehicle, a good stage separation with first stage making its way and touching down on Of Course I Still Love You, which is the third landing for this booster. And second stage is still looking good. It is coasting and getting ready to deploy Planet's three Skysats. And as a reminder, today marks our first Starlink rideshare mission for our customer planet. And it's worth mentioning that we may not actually see the deployment of these due to their placement on top of the Starlink stack where we don't have cameras positioned. So we may have to rely on confirmation over the nets. So you can see on your screen, this is the view of the Starlink satellites and the three Sky sets are sitting on Bermuda top expected. of them. Should be hearing a call out for the first sky set shortly. Sky set one separation confirmed. And there's that confirmation that that first sky set has deployed. Now these three sky sets. Oh, and it looks like we can actually see there's that first sky set satellite. Pretty awesome view. We should hear a call out for the second one here shortly. They're deploying in about 30 second increments here. Sky sat two separation confirmed. And there's the confirmation for the second sky set. And since we saw the first one, I think we should be able to see that second one shortly here as well. And there you can see it. Very cool views today. Now we just are waiting for that last and third, that third and final sky set here shortly. Sky set three separation confirmed. And there's confirmation of separation of that final sky set. These, th these three sky sets will be joining 15 already in orbit, and three more will be deploying on a separate Starlink mission later this summer, completing their fleet of 21 sky sets. 
Now stage two is going to continue to coast in this orbit for a few more minutes. During this time, it will start to spin on its central axis, giving the Starlink satellites the momentum that they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy at T plus 26 minutes. And as I mentioned earlier, because we will not have ground station coverage at time of deployment, we will not have visual or audio confirmation of a successful deploy until we reach the next station at Diego Garcia about 25 minutes from now. So with that, we're going to take another break here and return back at T plus 38 minutes so that we can confirm live a successful deployment of our 58 Starlink satellites. <laughs> 